For more on what this could mean for AI, let's bring in ARK Invest Chief Futurist Brett Winton. Brett, good to have you with us. Um, have you heard anything out of Jensen Huang so far that, you know, changes your mind about the story? No, but I mean, I think a lot of the panel um, covered the key issues here. Uh, it's clearly an amazing company. I think that there's a lot of demand for AI chips. We think that $14 trillion will be spent on AI software by 2030, and you're going to need trillions of dollars of AI chips per year to power that. Uh, and we underwrite that into the stock, and still it's a difficult valuation case to make over the course of the business cycle relative to other opportunities that are out there in the market. Mm -hmm. How do you think about the sort of halo effect um, that spending on AI chips will have in, in terms of broader tech spending? Wedbush had an interesting figure saying that for every dollar they estimate is spent on H100 chips, there's 10 to 12 dollars being spent on software and other sort of parts of the of the tech ecosystem that you need to make the AI chip work. Um, so so what is that sort of trajectory in your view? Yeah, both on the on the kind of like powering ecosystem of, of mm -hmm. tooling to, to have AI chips work and on the software that needs to be generating revenue on the back end to justify the um, capital investment in the AI chips. You know, we think the foundation model layer companies are really profoundly interesting. I think that that's probably a new emerging operating system for computation, and it puts a lot of the tech heavyweights at risk. There was news today or that reportedly Google and Apple might team up for Apple to license Google's Gemini model. I think that's a sign that these companies actually don't get that this is a new operating system that's emerging. It's not a feature to layer on top of existing tech platforms. Brett, it's Karen. Thanks for being on today. So it sounds like there are other names that you might like more than NVIDIA. Can you tell us what those are and why you like them? Sure. On the um, on the private side, we think Anthropic and its AI model is supremely interesting and that enterprises are scrambling to figure out how to deploy these things to generate productivity for their knowledge workers. Then on the public side, actually, Tesla is the most compelling AI story in the market. You're not being honest if you don't think that autonomous driving is not more likely to happen today than it was two years ago because of the advances in AI. And they have an amazing distribution network of all of their vehicles and their business model transforms if they can turn um, kind of their autonomous robo taxi software into a working commercializable product. Along those lines, Brett, since you are a futurist, um, when you're thinking about future ways to play AI, you know, there was a, an analyst on this morning and he had an interesting take on it. You know, when refrigeration was invented, it wasn't the refrigerator parts makers that became the winners in that all. It was Coca-Cola. So when you sort of apply that uh, metaphor to this situation, what are those kinds of companies that you think down the road will benefit the most? Well, I think there's a clear opportunity on the consumer side uh, and it's um, Entertainment is going to be transformed by having hyper compelling AI models that captivate our attention. So think of TikTok as the algorithmic feed, which Facebook or Meta has co opted. Well, imagine generated media content and how compelling that will be for end users. And we think that Meta's open sourcing of its AI operating systems uh, is, is actually an interesting angle that they'll be able to play to generate that really compelling consumer experience um, across their entire portfolio of apps.